Lori, I will start with you. Your year-end S&P 500 price target is somewhere below where we are currently. 2750 is your price target. How do you even come up with a number when, as Bob said, so many companies are pulling guidance? And we, how can you come up with a multiple? Sure. So uh, we run scenarios is really the, the bottom line here, here. And we only one of the seven scenarios we ran when we set that price target was based on earnings. And there we put our, in our guesstimate for where this year's earnings were going to be an average P.E. multiple. But other things we looked at included uh, what is your typical move uh, when you're in a recession in the stock market, when you see that first real year of pain. So we really looked at the historical playbook and, frankly, tried to look at as many non-earnings related metrics as we could. How do you think about uh, the risks ahead, Lori, and, and whether or not we understand them all? I mean, in a world without guidance to sort of continue this theme, uh, you know, is government data going to tell the full picture? For instance, we got the, the stupendously terrible ADP number this morning. Um, we're, we're moderately higher, and yet maybe, maybe job cuts aren't the whole story. There are a lot of people being asked to forfeit some pay, too, or bonuses, et cetera, which will obviously crimp consumer spending. I think that's a great point, and I think when the data is murky, when it's tough to model, you have to rely on logic and you have to rely on common sense. Uh, when we look at the economic data, you know, I think the market is assuming that some of these indicators are seeing their worst point in time and that while things will stay bad for a while, the rate of change will improve. And that's all well and good, and that, you know, that's often a catalyst to get markets higher, but I do think you have to consider some of what I call the lasting wounds and scars that are going to hit the consumer, that are going to hit corporate America from this crisis. Um, I think you make a great point on potential pay cuts and how that might affect consumer spending. Um, when we think about what all this means going forward, you know, we think the market has been legitimate to sort of price in some initial signs of recovery. It hasn't been uh, illogical, but it might end up being wrong. We're just going to have to watch the data, see if that rate of change does improve. Um, but I'll tell you, in general, my view is that as we sort of see the secondary impacts of this crisis mm -hmm. and the third order impacts of this crisis, I think investors are going to be shocked at what some of the fallout is, I think bottom line, we are setting up for choppy markets for quite some time. So we still feel very, very comfortable with our 2750 number. Eric, how are you thinking about your world, the world of small caps, and that small caps tend to be more domestically focused, um, and they have underperformed the broader markets year to date? Yeah, I think also, you know, small caps also tend to be a little more economically sensitive. And right now, we're flying at zero visibility for a lot of companies when we don't have earnings guidance and we don't really know what the short term is going to look like. So I think this is the time that you really have to focus on balance sheets and how adaptive is the business model and look out beyond just the next quarter or so in order to really value companies.